What's up YouTube, I'm Josh Newland. In this video, I'm going to share and explain with you guys everything you need to know about the three different divisions of the NCAA. So really quick, I just wanna make it clear, some of the stats I'm using may be a little outdated they probably won't be exact. Just hard out there on the internet researching because there's a lot of different conflicting stats from different years and things like that. So forgive me, but I can't promise you that every stat in here is exact and current to 2021. Now, the NCAA, the National Collegiate Athletic Association, is by far the biggest, most popular um, organization of college sports in America and in the world as well because college sports are bigger here in America than anywhere else. The NCAA is made up of over a thousand schools with over tens of thousands of athletics programs, sports teams, and hundreds of thousands of student athletes and they split this up into three different divisions. So first I'm gonna explain some of these basic differences between the divisions and then later on in the video I will explain specifically how that relates to college soccer because I know so many of my viewers um, are college soccer players, wanna play college soccer. And for you guys watching from other countries internationally, um, I would call it college football, but that means American football in America. So we call it college soccer here. So first of all, division one. This is the division everybody in high school, if they wanna play college sports, they wanna play D1. This is a division you have the best chance of going pro um, in any sport is Division One NCAA Division One. They are not the largest division in terms of how many member schools are in there, but by popularity, by general money, money made and money invested into it, they are definitely the biggest. There are about 350 Division One schools across the country. About half of these schools consist of 10,000 students or more. So when it comes to size, population-wise, they are the biggest schools you will find. About two thirds of NCAA Division I schools are in urban areas, just meaning in cities and bigger cities. Um, two thirds of D1 schools are found there. And also two thirds of Division I schools are public. Normally public schools are a bit cheaper. And then of course, one third of Division I schools are private, which normally means more expensive. Now the median price for out-of-state tuition, median is similar to average price. For D1, it is about $40,000 per year. This is also out-of-state, so normally it is a bit cheaper if you're going to a school that is within your state. Also, Division I is the only division where there are any schools that profit um, just based off athletics. And even then, the D1 schools that do profit off athletics are the big, big names. You know, there's a lot, like I said, 350 D1 schools, and just a handful of those are making money. Most of them are losing it. And just something important to remember, basketball and football are pretty much the only sports that any schools profit off of. And even then, only the best schools and the schools of the biggest brand names and fan bases will profit off those sports because that also takes a big investment, especially for American football. Now, D2. There are 312 Division II schools in America. Almost all of these schools are around 10,000 students or less, and the majority of that is still um, around three, four, five, six thousand 6,000 students at D2 schools. For D2, it is almost split down the middle between how many public and private schools there are. 48% are public, 52% are private. The median out-of-state tuition cost for D2s is 35,000 per year, which is the cheapest out of the three divisions. And there's a pretty decent mix of where they're located, whether that's urban, suburban, or in smaller towns as far as D2 schools go. Now for D3, it is the largest division as far as the total number of student athletes, sports programs, and member schools. There are 435 Division III schools, so significantly larger than D1 and D2. Average amount of students at Division III is normally about three or 4,000 or less. So a lot of these schools are about the size of a high school, if not smaller. For example, I go to a Division III school and there are about 
1,400 or 1,500 students and my high school has about 3,000 students. The median out-of-state tuition cost per year is about 46,000 for Division III, so also the most expensive out of the three divisions. As far as D3 goes, only 20% of the schools are public and 80% are private, which is, is a big reason why it's the most expensive division out of the three, and also is the most academically focused out of the three divisions. A very important thing about D3 is that they do not offer athletic scholarships. Whatever financial aid you get is just based off of grades, test scores, or submitting for outside scholarships. So just to be honest, to go to a D3, you pretty much either have to be smart or rich, and a lot of times, a bit of both. <laughs> D3 also has a pretty good mix of, it just depends on the school, of whether that's in a big city, in the suburbs, or in a smaller town. Mine is in a smaller town, around 25,000 people. Another thing to note about all of these different divisions, it depends on the school, how many D1, D2, D3 schools there are in the state, for example, my school is in Texas. There are tons of D3 schools in Texas, especially with men's college soccer. Whereas I live in Arizona, we don't have a single D3 men's college soccer team. We don't have a D2. We have one D1 men's college soccer team. Everything else is either NAI or JUCO. In California, they have a ton of D2 and D1 schools. So it's not evenly split at all. Like there's this many number of D2 or D3 or D1 schools per state. It just depends on the state. Another thing I really wanna make clear, um, the biggest difference between these divisions, really at the end of the day, it comes down to money. Now money does not always directly translate to better student athletes, better facilities, better players, more guys going pro, but most of the time it does translate to that. D1 schools, even the worst D1 school is probably going to have better facilities, better players, better coaching, um, you know, more things provided for the athletes as far as gear goes than an average D3 school would. But, you know, the best D2 school could definitely be a D1 school and compete well D1. Same thing, um, vice versa, D3 with D2. So don't get in your head that D1 is the only way you can go pro and that's where the only good players are. There are very, very good D3 players, very, very good D2 players, and there are some D1 players that really aren't that good. And certain athletes could have gone D1 and they purposely choose to go to a smaller school like D2 or D3. So just keep that in mind. Um, for the most part, it's true. D1 is the best, but that does not mean in every situation when it comes to every individual student athlete and as far as everything around the sports program goes at the school. You should investigate that for yourself. Everything depends on the school, not necessarily the division that the school is in. Now, as far as men's college soccer goes across these different divisions, starting with D1 again, there are 205 men's college soccer programs out of about 350 D1 schools. These 205 teams are split into 25 different D1 conferences, and then they have a national tournament to determine the, the champions every fall and for that national championship 48 out of those 205 teams um, go to that national tournament and have a chance to be the champions also for scholarships d1 they get about 9.9 .9, um, full athletic scholarships that doesn't mean that about 10 guys get full rides and everyone else gets nothing it's normally divided up and again this depends on the school and the people running the athletic program at each school so talk to those coaches individually and get to know how it works. But a lot of time, you'll almost never get more than like three guys on full rides at a D1 men's soccer team, and the rest is split up between the other players. So very, very few guys will get full rides. And also another thing to note is the average roster is normally about 30 guys on a team. So they have to split up about 10 of those full athletic scholarships between 30 guys. So some guys might get very little to no athletic scholarship, other guys might have everything paid for. Now for D2, there are 214 Division II men's college soccer programs out of about 312 D2 schools. Those 214 teams are split into 23 different conferences and 40 schools go to their national tournament 
40 out of 214 schools can make that and have a chance to become the national champions. And for D2, they are given nine full scholarships, but I think it is extremely, extremely rare to go to a D2 and be on a full ride. About four years ago, I talked to the coach from Colorado State Pueblo and he said the average scholarship of a guy on the team was about three grand um, a year. And again, like I said, this depends on each school, what the average scholarships offered and how they split that, those nine scholarships up. So D2, do not expect to get a full ride and just don't be surprised if the scholarship you're offered doesn't cover a huge portion of your tuition. Finally, D3, there are 410 men's college soccer programs out of 435 schools. So they have almost as many teams as D1 and D2 combined. There are tons of opportunities to play Division III college soccer. Those 410 schools are split up between 48 different conferences and for their yearly national tournament, they have 62 teams compete to become the Division III national champions. Like I mentioned before, there are no athletic scholarships for Division III. It is only based on academics. So that's my full breakdown of the three different divisions of the NCAA. I will link two articles that are official from the NCAA website down in the description below if you guys wanna read through um, how I got a lot of the information to make this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, learned something from this. Share this with someone else who's not sure, doesn't know yet um, about the different NCAA divisions. I hope this helps because I know for a long time I didn't even know there was more than just NCAA Division I and I really had no information about D2 or D3. Just remember there are tons and tons of opportunities outside NCAA Division I, not only D2 and D3 but also NAIA and JUCO which I will be making videos about that in the future. If you did enjoy, please do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content and you're interested in college soccer, my whole channel is really focused around my journey as a college soccer player, specifically as a Division III college soccer player. So if that interests you, you want to see weekly videos about the lifestyle of that, then please subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your continued support of me and my channel. I will see you on Saturday.